cruising through these streets, got one thing on my mind. I've been thinking about you since we kissed that first time. Took it slow and we made it right. Bit of me and my perfect type. Put a ring on it now, baby. I might man three years and she my whole life. She just wanna Hey guys, welcome to episode three of season two of Buskers by the Lake podcast, where we're going to give you guys the inside scoop on some of the awesome performing artists featuring in this year's festival. My name is Lauren and I'm your host for this year. Today I have with me the amazing Jason Daniels, aka the winner of last year's Battle of the Buskers. Hey, how are ya? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, so lovely to have you here. Now, Jason, we're going to get right into it. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a musician. Uh, I wouldn't like consider myself a, a full-time busker or anything, but um, definitely playing gigs as much as I can and do a lot of production as well and producing my own stuff and other artists and anything music-based, I'm um, keen as. So. Awesome. So yeah. what kind of music do you specialise in? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I feel like it tends to be more singer-songwriter, roots, reggae, nice. groove, yeah, that kind of side of things, but happy to give anything Still a bit a of a spectrum there. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very broad broad thing. So how old were you and how did you get started with all of this? Oh, like as in when did I start playing music in general or just the industry? Yeah. Anything you want to tell us about how you got into it? Okay. um, Music's always been a part of life for me. I think my mum freaked out when I was a couple of months old clicking along to to music (laughs) and was like, this kid should probably do something music based. So she was always buying secondhand instruments and throwing them in front of me. So, oh, that's so nice. And she's musical herself, so I have a lot to oh, her. So it's in the blood. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Nice. So yeah. what was the first instrument you picked up? Um, piano was the first one. And then um, that, you know, two-handed piano turned into drums probably two years later. And then I realised both drums and piano are way too heavy to carry around everywhere. So <laughs> guitar <one>. was the <laughs> landing point. So, yeah, it worked really – yeah, I love them all though. Yeah. So you still play all of them? Definitely. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. I'm so yeah. jealous. I, I learnt a little bit of flute in primary school and that's about it. And now I see people like Lizzo who are like pulling out the flute on the red carpet oh, and I'm like, man. could have been me. Should have been me. <laughs> flute's hard. Flute's really hard. It's difficult. But you know what? When you learn it, I think that – um, I think maybe is it saxophone, like that's actually the same like keys oh, and stuff. Seriously? So you, once you learn the flute, you can like apply it to the other brass instruments. Oh, I thought that, that was a really sense. cool fact that I could never like, because I'm asthmatic, I could never get the breath <laughs> oh, behind no. me to do the saxophone oh, or the clarinet. Yeah. So there goes my musical career. Oh. <laughs> so what does training look like for you? Yeah. Um, practicing. Even. Yeah. I think, I think for me, like when I've got a lot of gigs happening, I don't get to do much um, mm. practice in the sense, cause you know, you are just constantly playing. So you kind of keeping your tools sharp. Yeah. But um, when you have done it for a while, practicing to me is just like jamming and, and um, trying some new songs out. And normally songwriting becomes a big part of practicing for me because mm. I'll try and challenge myself with what I'm creating. and Definitely just a bit of like a creative that. outlet for you. Do you still like do covers or anything like that just to jam or? Oh, yeah, definitely. And it depends on the gig too. You know, like if you've been given a three-hour gig, it's like, you know, you, you can slide more covers in a longer gig. But, yeah, when you've got a shorter <laughs> gig, if you're going to do a cover, it's like, all right, I've really got to pick this well. Yeah, you've yeah. got to have the crowd sort of pumping with you a little bit. Like, yeah, you exactly. Like, oh, no, this one. Here's Wonderwall. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> nah. Not a fan of Oasis? Oh, look, it's a great song. Um, it's just like uh, you just get absolutely roasted with that song <laughs> as a request. I think it's a bit of a meme now, isn't it? <laughs> I think so, yeah, which is a shame because it is a good song. It is, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, um, it's brilliant, but a little overdone. So. Uh-huh. Where where do you live now? Uh, in Nambour. In Nambour. Yeah. So how how does where you live affect your work? Like, do you get a lot of gigs sort of there? Do you have to travel far or? Yeah, I mean Nambour's good because it's like the centre of the sunny coast. So mm. you kind of got Noosa and Caloundra within the same kind of range. So yeah. it works really well. Um, just getting to drive around the coast. Obviously, like obviously, like for Brizzy and Goldie. It's a bit further. It's a bit further, but it's... More of a day not, trip. It's not too bad, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So were you born and raised around here or...? No, I was um, actually born in Penrith. So I'm oh, a Western, the Rift! Nice! I'm a Western <laughs> suburbs boy, yeah. Yeah, nice. I, I spent a lot of time there growing up myself, so... Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah there yeah, you go. There you go. Small world, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually grew up in the Blue Mountains. Oh, um, lovely. So that was kind of where I grew up on a cattle farm. 
oh, up nice. the top of some place somewhere up there. So, <laughs> yeah. I, um, I know the mountains pretty well as well. So, oh, cool. Yeah, it looks small well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, um, I love to go back there sort of around the winter time when it all gets sort of snowy from like Lithgow and like mm-hmm. inwards. Ah, oh, so lovely. Fully. So when, um, what is your favorite part about what you do? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, like obviously as a creative to express your creativity is a wonderfully, beautifully fulfilling thing. Uh, and being a songwriter, getting to kind of live life and then package it in little memory, mm. you know, boxes as songs is mm-hmm. really, really cool as well. But I think like I'm, I just love meeting people. I think that's the best thing, like when music can take you places, just the, the incredible people you get to meet along the way would by far be the most rewarding thing, I think. Like, So then on that note, have you had any really like strange or interesting experiences with people? Like hit us with some stories. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, good stories or bad stories? <laughs> we'll take anything. <laughs> oh, it's, the first story that comes to mind is I played this gig uh, at a yacht club event once um, and uh, it was just, oh, there was no parking and my bass mm. player was running late because he couldn't get a park and um, this one park opened up directly in front and I'm like, okay, Cheering. like we're on stage <laughs> in like five minutes. So I ran out and I stood in this parking spot just to reserve it because he was just coming around and then this old guy pulls in and I like oh, tapped no. on the window. I was like, hey man, told him the scenario and he's like, F you, I'll give you the right. And just like ran me over oh, with his no. car. Yeah. He did it. He literally hit oh me with God. his car. And then just like, I'm on the ground, just like, ah, and started <laughs> abusing me and walked off. The hell? I know. I was just like, oh my gosh. And then anyway, the bass player found another park and I'm like, had to run straight inside, straight onto stage. Hobbling. And He's I'm like, yeah, I had tire marks up my jeans oh, no. and I was like, sh- I was like full, ch- like shaking in trauma, had to play a whole set just like my hands just like <laughs> did it all go off with a hitch in the end though well I mean <laughs> well yeah that was the thing hey because I was like I, I don't know I was too polite back then I think if it was me now I would have like done a shout out to him in the middle of the gig like this song goes <laughs> like, out to the- look for him in the crowd <laughs> yeah. this is for you old man <laughs> yeah seriously but I I like just was like whatever I need to play this gig you have yeah. a nice day but you know water for ducks back Pretty much, yeah, but still. How, how much water can you get off a duck's back when you've been run over, though? <laughs> like, I mean, I've I know, been it's a bit for of a, a while. Oh, I still every so often have to be like, no, I, he doesn't have real estate in my head anymore. That's that's all right. I have to let it go. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> how long ago was this? My goodness. Uh, maybe five years. Uh, yeah. Were you up here at that stage or were you still there? Yeah, running? it was yeah. the first band gig I ever played up here. Wow. Oh, second. Yeah, so it was just like <laughs> everything was so fresh. Oh, oh, hopefully it didn't set the tone for the rest of them. No, By not the sounds at all. Of it, it's going any... pretty well with winning buskers. It was so... all up from there. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, for well. sure. There is always a way up when you've been run over. Yeah, it's a, um... look, it's a good starting place if you want this, you know, <laughs> increase. <Exactly. laughs> Have you had any other memorable experiences you want to talk about? Yeah. Um... Oh, like there's some cool things when you write songs. And then they kind of grow legs and then live in someone else's life then, yes. you know. Like for me, like there's one particular song that I wrote about a relationship I had at the time and it's a sweet little love song thing. And obviously, you know, I mean, not obviously, but that relationship <laughs> didn't work. But that song is still out there. And so I remember this couple coming to me that were like, you know, oh, this is the song that like mm-hmm. kind of got us together and is like in oh, all our early memories together. And, and, you know, they've totally taken this song on as That's like so their fr- like relationship song. Yeah. And so it's just really cool to be like, wow, this song is so special to them. Even though it's walked out of my life, mm. it can still keep going and like it's impacting so, others. So it's so it must be feel like so rewarding to have that as well. Like having someone sing along in the crowd, like to a song that you've written or, mm-hmm. you know, just like hear the stories of how, like what your music means to other people. And I always think when I like listen to, you know, music on YouTube that's live and you can hear the audience. And I'm like, that must be the most special thing. Mm-hmm. Like just that recognition of your work and how it's touched someone else. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, sometimes it's a bit overwhelming when you're like, this is so beautiful. Like, even when if you t- like a song, you teach them on the spot and they sing it back to you. It's mm. just like, this is wild. I came up with this like on my bed and now we're all <laughs> <laughs> singing it we're together. It's like, together. yeah, it's beautiful. It, it is really, really It's beautiful. very humbling. It, I was going to say, it's probably quite humbling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I like something in me struggles to, 
to work out how some musos heads get so big because for me every time anything vaguely like that happens it's just like oh my goodness how like this mm. is so beautiful and humbling not like yeah check it out <laughs> my song <laughs> you can sort of still see that as well like some of those bigger artists are still quite humble. I was seeing like this mm. meme about Lord recently. I don't know if you've seen it, how she shushed the audience. <laughs> she was like, they were singing along to one of her more emotional songs. And she mm. was like, Shh, this is my moment. Like, but you know, that just went off. It blew up. It was like, everyone yeah. was mad at her because like, wow, why would you tell the audience to not sing your song? Obviously it resonates with them as well. But then, you know, yeah. a couple of weeks later, she's like, well, I'm a meme. She was like talking in a, um, in a concert. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, I realize now I'm a meme, but I just want to explain myself. And she just went on to sort of say that, you know, that, that song has such meaning to her. Right. And so when the audience is singing along out of key. Kind of diverts it, kind it of, a bit for her. Yeah. yeah. And so. Interesting. It's interesting to sort of see that, um, the, the contrast there of like people sort of think that she's got this massive ego when actually, I guess, I mean. I don't necessarily know if I agree <laughs> yeah. with like what she was saying, right? but I mean, it's her story, I guess. So that's it. Um, that's you can't it. really sort of like tell someone that their story isn't their story. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, I fully, fully. Totally. Totally. <laughs> so who or what are your biggest influences or inspiration? Oh, that's a good question. I like, I mean, obviously it changes through mm -hmm. time. Like I grew up on a lot of like, um, like Beach Boys mm -hmm. and kind of early that type of music. And then also grew up on like a lot of gospel type stuff. Oh, so big okay. harmony stuff, big. Yeah, that's an interesting contrast, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like, I think that influence where you got a lot of, you know, a soul and so much belief coming through music. It's like, wow, it gives it such a big meaning, which yeah. is so inspiring, I think. Definitely. What about more modernly? Yeah. Who inspires you now? Um, well, I think it would have been like 15 or 16 when I discovered John Mayer and that mm -hmm. was like a big thing as far as, wow, the songwriter that plays the guitar and it's not just face melting, it's like real sensitive guitar work. Yeah, definitely. So that was a big one. What's and your favourite John Mayer album? Oh. Rufus oh, Squares? Probably Continuum. Continuum, yeah. I think it's just classic. That was the one with, forgive me and my lack of music knowledge, that's the one with Waiting on the World to Change? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That was the lead I single. I did know. <laughs> well done. You're a John Mayer fan? Or? Um. I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan, but I know enough and I, okay. um, I loved, I think, what's the one after Room for Squares? Um, Heavier Things? Might've been that one. With Daughters with on it? With Daughters and mm -hmm. like, what's the one with like, Why Georgia? I think that's Room for Squares. That, okay. Well, there you go. It must be one of the two. Okay, cool. But like, I would listen to it quite a bit. I feel like I should know it, but you know, it was quite a long time ago. Fully. So. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. definitely do like John Mayer. Nice. Um, nice. So we use it like sort of into like Jack Johnson, that sort of thing as well. Yeah. Jason Mraz, like that whole Jason Mraz, singer yeah. songwriter kind of world. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Everybody thinks of Jason Mraz and thinks like, um, I'm yours and that sort of thing. But I'm mm. like, no, the remedy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so underrated. Oh right? yeah. yeah. Oh Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a similar deal, right? He covers such a, a broad range of broad range, musicality, yeah. not just like the I'm the guy with the ukulele and the fedora, and and that's what he's known for. Yeah, right? so but it works marketing, right? It does, it does. I and guess it's how the it's industry such a works. nice, inoffensive song. And um, yeah, oh, it's, <laughs> I think that was the first song I ever played solo ever. So, oh really? Yeah, on a ukulele in like year seven. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it feels quite right, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I think so. It just makes sense. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> so, what's the best like piece of advice? you've ever been given oh it's a toughie isn't it <laughs> i mean <laughs> for everyone listening he's shuffling in his chair oh man tapping his knee. Thinking, there's like <laughs> so many wonderful things that i've been told over the years um for some reason the one that's coming to my head was like the this too shall pass Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard that. Yeah. You know, I, I know Tom, Tom Hanks has said it in a, a famous interview recently, but I've had a few people say that in the sense so of true. like, it's a hard time now. Oh, this, this too shall pass. Or like, mm. this is the greatest moment. And this too, shall, like, it's just like life has this way of just keep, just keeps on moving. Right. And so for people that are going through hard things, there's always hope. Yeah. And for people that are thinking they're living on top of the world, there's this humbling thing of like, be really, really thankful for it, you know? Mm. So I, I love that. I yeah. think that's definitely very solid. I think that that's, like you say, very humbling. So, mm -hmm. And it's so true. I mean, like, the world just keeps turning no matter what, with or without you. It keeps on going, right? Yeah. yeah, fully. Exactly. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone starting out in the industry? Yeah, I... 
Oh, actually, this is another good piece of advice I heard from <laughs> a, like a kind of a music mentor of mine who who's like he's older, an older guy, but he's been so like encouraging to me and was like good friends with all the BG guys back in the day and oh, was wow. in bands and all that. So he kind of said like, you need to attack music with the tenacity of a, like a 16 year old boy, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> every, this is the coolest thing ever. This is awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend 23 hours a day under, you know, <laughs> just like that tenacity of being so excited about creativity and just throwing yourself into it and being like, what are, you know, whatever ducks back, like when things mm. go wrong, when you get run over by cars, when you, <laughs> you know, like it's just, yeah. but I just love music so much. I'm still going to just, just pick yourself up, just back go up for it. Keep, keep going. Yeah. Well, practice makes perfect too. So you like, you need to just keep going or you get rusty really, won't you? Yeah, that's it. Or you get a bit like jaded and like, oh, life's so mean to <laughs> creatives. And it's like, yeah, but music, like, yeah. you know. Well, you do it for the passion, right? You don't necessarily get into it because you think you're going to make a lot of money because, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but a lot of people don't get into Hollywood or And it's not a great like motive. It's not a deep enough motivation, you know. No, like, yeah. not when you're a creative. It no. needs to come from the heart. Mm -hmm, 100%. Definitely, definitely. So professionally, what is your goal? Professionally, like, I mean, for me, I've always just thought, like, whatever journey kind of music unfolds for me, like, whatever that looks like, be content with it and do your best at it. And mm. so in some seasons it's meant going overseas and playing gigs and doing some cool things like that. For the last kind of two and a half years, I got to go to Arnhem Land and teach oh, an Indigenous wow. community and be a producer in a studio there and work so with Indigenous rewarding. artists, not wear shoes for nine months, go oh, like learn the language, yes. everything. So music was that catalyst, you know. And so whatever season, now it's back to gigs, whatever it looks like, just being okay with that so I think for me like obviously the dream would be to travel more and for music mm. to be that vehicle and to get to meet more people and write more songs with a greater reach but whatever the journey that music ends up unfolding I guess is, I'm cool for that you know I so. love that so where is the favorite place that you've been like to to do like music like overseas mm. specifically um, you mentioned Arnhem Land so I'm like that's probably the winner uh, well but yeah on more of an international front uh, it'd probably be kind of two things. I played a really big festival in Vanuatu, which oh was amazing. Gosh. It's called Fest Napwen. It's all in, online and stuff. Wow. Um, and just because I write a lot of reggae kind of tunes, to hear that hit the islands for the first time, like it was amazing. Like it they went just off. it went off. Yeah. Yes. So that that was really cool. Um, the other one would be probably Nashville when I went to the states oh. to play over there. Um, just how much they really honest songwriting Aussies are like oh you write this song good job over there it's like the song so it's really that creativity coming out that they really respect and honor over there yeah there's yeah. a culture for it for sure definitely so um what's your fantasy <laughs> fantasy I <laughs> I mean it kind of would tie in with what we said before I think like just to be able to live fully um, following the music and being creative, you know, and, yeah. and getting to travel and getting to see new places and experience new cultures. I think that see really where it takes you. Yeah. And you know, like I got, I got married end of last year and so I would just, thank you. <laughs> she's amazing. Okay. So I would love that to be, you know, she's a muso as well. It'd be just uh, super cool for us to be able to just go for it go in the music industry and have a family, take them around the world, just do that type of thing, you know, oh, in the creative industries so would just good. be the dream. So. And, like, it's reachable. Yeah. Like, it's so, fully. so doable. Definitely. I hope that you Definitely. get to do that sooner rather than later with the world being the way it is with COVID. Oh, you didn't tell me about it. <laughs> so what have you got coming up for you in the next, say, month or so? Yeah, um, got a few local gigs happening. So there's yeah. some really cool events in Nambour and things like that that are, like, community-based events that, me and the band get to play at and I've got a, um, a single launch happening. Well, I've got a single that I'm going to be releasing in the next month and a half as well, exciting. which is exciting. Very. It's been a song I've been hanging on to for a while, but it's like, yep, yeah, I'm happy with this. So Awesome. That's probably the big things coming up. And then like a lot of festivals starting to happen second half of the year. Of course, Buskers by the Lake. Buskers being, yes, definitely <laughs> that one there. So really excited about that. We're very excited to see you there. So how can people find you? How do they want to, like, how can we follow you on Instagram or social media? Yeah, uh, well, my um, my name no, uh, is Jason <laughs> Daniels Live. So at Instagram, it's it's Jason Daniels Live, Facebook, YouTube, all that. It's all. the same across all. I made it easy for myself <laughs> a month ago. It took me a few years to learn that, but. 
Awesome. Jason Daniels Live. Well, thank you so much for that. I'm going to go and follow you right now. Oh, thank you. (laughs) And I can't wait to see you update us from all over the globe with your family. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) We're all reading for you. Um, And otherwise, we will see you at Buskers. We're so excited. Keen as. Yay. Well, thank you for coming along today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks. See you later.